A five Americans who were wrongly held captive in Iran are now on their way back home. They were released as part of a prisoner exchange that saw the United States free five Iranians convicted of crimes in the United States, as well as the United States unfreezing $6 billion in oil revenue. All of this coincides with the one-year anniversary of the murder of Masa Amini, the 22-year-old Iranian woman who died in police custody after she was detained by the government's morality police for not wearing a hijab in accordance with government rules. Her death set into motion an historic wave of citizen protests inside Iran with women and men in Iran protesting, women bravely taking off their hijabs in defiance of the Iranian regime. Perhaps there is no better person that we have access to to talk about what's happening on the ground, what's happening to women and their parents and children and boys than Masi Alinejad. She has been a voice for the voiceless, for the shut out of the conversation humans in Iran, where she has been exiled and she's now a target of that country's oppressive government. Earlier in the year, three men with ties to the Iranian regime were charged by the Department of Justice in a murder for hire plot targeting her. And last week, she revealed that she was advised to go into witness protection for her own safety. Masi Alinejad has not taken up that advice and she does not plan to. She joins us now. It's How, not in my DNA. No, I know. <laughs> I, I mean, when I read that, I, 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 had, I told you in the break, I had two minds. I'm happy they're trying to protect you, and two, have they met you? To be honest, when I read the email, I was excited that, wow, this is, this is you know, my adopted country. They're trying to protect me because they said that high-level protection. I was like, wow. And then in a conversation on the phone, I found out this is witness protection. It means, for those of you, if you don't have any idea what witness protection means, that I have to change my name, my identity, uh, my maybe appearance, and go in hiding, into hiding, like just, just get disappeared. This is not in my DNA. I want to be loud. I want to give voice to voiceless people. And I think I understand the why. I mean, we've talked about how difficult it is for us to cover what's happening in Iran, and you are their voice. So even if you wouldn't do it for yourself, I feel like you wouldn't do it for them. Not at all. Look, right now that I'm talking to you, everywhere in the media, they're talking about five Americans got free. I am happy, for sure. But how come that Biden administration gave six billion dollars? To me, it's more than six billion. My sources tell me it could be 20 billion dollars. So they give this money to Islamic Republic. But how come? How come they left the one is in the death row, Jamshid Sharmat. He's an American as well. So th there are a lot of political prisoners that they want me to give them a voice. Right now that I'm talking to you, the family members of uh, Mahsa Amini and other people who got killed last year, they got arrested. The family members are more than 70 people. So to us Iranians, this $6 billion is a gift to our killers from Biden administration. It points to the asymmetry of an American administration and an American government that values life so much negotiating with a regime like the Iranians. It's never going to be equal. It's never going to be fair because they don't value life. And there is no even trade with a country that values it more than anything else. Yeah. And I think it's a fair criticism. I want to ask you what you understand about the arrest of Masi's father and family. Mahsa's family got arrested. And as I told you, the family members of other young protesters who got killed got arrested because the Islamic Republic have fear of any potential uprising. And they know that these family members, they can, uh, you know, mobilize people. People can sympathy with their pain and a struggle. But what actually bothers me that you can't see the news about the family members of these 70 people especially those who got executed. You remember you invited me here. I was begging everyone to stop the Islamic Republic, uh, you know, from executing these protesters. Now their family members are in prison. So that is why I'm saying that all I hear in the West is about a nuclear deal, which I believe that this is allowing the Islamic Republic to bury human rights under nuclear deal, or about this prisoner swap that nobody talks about 22,000 innocent protesters who are in prison. So that is why I believe that handing out money to the hostage takers and giving them visa, 
the Ibrahim Raisi, the butcher who ordered the killing of Mahsa Amini and 50, uh, like uh, 1,500 innocent protesters in bloody November and 700 innocent protesters uh, who got killed in women-led revolution recently, he ordered that. But he's being welcomed here in New York. And the members of Revolution Regards that like coming with him, they are on the terrorist list, which I actually gave uh, some of their names to Jake Sullivan, and I asked them, how come you designate Revolutionary Guards as a terrorist organization, but they can come and get visa and, you know, be part of the delegation of Ibrahim Raisi? So your fundamental issue, and this is a practice that our government engages in, is with separating out, right? The, the, the nuclear deal was you done separate. Do from, and your point is that if you are you living in Iran, you don't separate out what happens to you. Not at all. Look, you're talking about a regime kills teenagers, kills children. How you trust them? How come you talk to a regime... And they benefit by the fact that we don't have cameras there. We can't show the world. We can't see it. Exactly. They, and about nuclear deal, let's get back to that. How come you're going to have a deal with a regime that they hide their nuclear activities? They actually cheat. They lie. How you trust them? But I have a solution. Look, the, right now that we are talking here, the U.S. citizen... The UK citizen, German citizen, French citizen, Swedish citizen, all the citizens of uh, Western countries are being hostage in Iranian prison. They are being used like bargaining chip. Instead of giving them money and sending them signal, then like, okay, come and get more hostages, get united, downgrade your diplomatic relation. This is how US government should do. They can take the lead. The Western countries, they're looking to the US government. What they do, they're gonna follow. Right now, I'm sure that more money is going to go to Islamic Revolution in regards to kill innocent people in the name of prisoner saw. This is a betrayal, total betrayal. This is a slap in the face of Mahsa Amini and other innocent prisoners who are in prison right now. They're so lucky to have you and your voice for them. Thank you. That's why I don't want to go into hiding. And you have to bring I, the White I House here it, to talk I to. I read it, and I, <laughs> I said, I, I told you, I said, I am sure they are right about the threats to her. And I'm sure they haven't met her yet if they think she would ever go. Never, never. I refuse to be <laughs> silent. And thank you so much for not abandoning Iranian women. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you.